All right, all right, we're back in business. I'm back at school, back doing assignments, and back talking about puck. Let's talk about some NHL news, some stuff. Moving away from the NHL prospects and all that, let's actually talk about some stuff that people want to listen about. And the scoop is coming a little bit out of the left field here. This is an article published by The Fourth Period talking about Jesse Pugliarvi. Yeah, the Edmonton guy, the really good in Finland but not so great in the NHL guy. Yeah, we're talking about him. This article was published yesterday on Remembrance Day, on Veterans Day, and it talks about how Jesse Pugliarvi is probably going to stay in Finland with the Carpat this season despite the fact that NHL interest from other teams has been picking up. Now, before we go past any of that and we go into what's actually happening, let's talk about the fourth period first, just in case you needed a little bit of a refresher. Yes, the fourth period is run by David Pagnotta, who is an NHL media person. He contributes everywhere on NHL news. He's on Sirius XM for the NHL. He's for the PHWA, too. And he runs the fourth period. He has 70,000 Twitter followers. So the fourth period is a legit NHL news resource, or at least one that has much more merit than a traditional one-person blogger in his room kind of scenario. So the fourth period actually does have some interesting things to bring up, and this article on Pugliarvi was published yesterday. Let's go over it a little bit and talk about what actually is involved. Yeah, we talked about it. Pugliarvi is enjoying his time with Karpat, and he's probably going to help them go far in the playoffs, at least according to what he wants to happen. The Oilers have been engaged in trade talks involving Pugliarvi since last season, but talks have picked up again since recently. Several teams have expressed various levels of interest in the fourth overall pick of the 2016 NHL entry draft, including the New York Rangers, the Montreal Canadiens, and Arizona Coyotes, according to reports. Though it's unclear if a deal is imminent. So... There you have it. Obviously, I'll leave the link in the description to the full article here. Take a look at it. It's not a long read, so you'll actually get some stuff out of this one here. But these are the teams. Of course, you already know that because you saw the title and you saw the thumbnail. But the Rangers, the Habs, and the Yotes are three teams that, according to Pagnota in the fourth period, are the closest to acquiring Jesse Pugliarvi and are the ones that have actually expressed the most interest here. So, if we're going to take a look at Pugliarvi, I want to take a look at three individual scenarios with each of these teams because it could actually be really interesting just to take a look at what these teams could offer as well as how Pugliarvi would be able to mesh with the systems that they have. Let's start off with Montreal because I'm a primary Habs fan first out of these three teams. I'm a secondary Habs fan to my Vancouver Canucks, so... Pugliarvi going over to the Habs would be a very interesting thing to talk about. Obviously, the chemistry would be there with other Finnish players. Kotkaniemi is not doing too well right now, but Pugliarvi with Kotkaniemi growing alongside of each other would be pretty nice. As well, Arturi Lekkonen is over there. He's also a great player sometimes. But the Montreal Canadiens are in a position where I think if they really wanted to, they could go after a Jesse Pugliarvi. And... When it comes to the cost, I wouldn't be surprised if the Canadians were willing to shell out a draft pick or two or maybe a younger prospect because this argument has been made a few times in regards to other Montreal Canadiens trade rumors, but the Habs have so many valuable prospects and valuable draft picks that they can afford to get rid of some. If the asking price for a Pugliarv was, let's say, for example, a second and a third, Montreal can get that easily. And they can give it up easily with no qualms because what are they going to do with the second and a third? They've already used so many of their previous draft picks on really good players going forward into the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds that... A second and a third to them, sure, it could be a pretty good prospect, but they already have so many pretty good prospects. We talked about Cam Hillis the other day. He was drafted in the third round in 2018, and this guy is doing absolutely great things in the OHL right now. The Habs 
can afford to lose a draft pick or two to get Polio Yarvi and add him to the other Finns that they have. Jesse Alonen is a guy who was taken a little bit later. He's doing pretty well. Norlander is doing really well for an overage draftee. Raphael Harvey Pinard, Jaden Struble, all of these players are really good players, and the Canadians can afford to definitely lose out on a pick or two to get another youngin. Going over to the other teams, though, let's talk about the New York Rangers, because the Rangers are in a weird spot. They're not doing too well on the standings right now, and in terms of their prospect depth, sure, Capocacco is really good, and he's going to be amazing in this league. Sure, Kraftsov is going to be really good, too. Sure, they have Panarin, etc., but a lot of their prospects, quote-unquote, the guys who are in the minor leagues, the guys who are in junior, they haven't necessarily been amazing. Now, I will give them credit where credit is due. A lot of their really late-round picks have started to become really, really good. Hunter Skinner, for example, the guy was a USHL defenseman, and now he's in the OHL at a point a game. That's crazy. Nico Gross is another guy who's doing really well as well. So the Rangers have a lot of underrated prospects, but in terms of who they have as legitimate value, I'd say Montreal has a much better prospect pool value-wise than the Rangers. So the Rangers, I'm not necessarily too sure if they're as willing to part with a draft pick in the same way that Montreal would be able to. With that being said, though, the Rangers do have quite a good set of players in their minor league in Hartford and on the NHL as well. Obviously, Capocacco is going to be really good. Obviously, Cheadle is going to be really good. Leish Anderson looks like he has a pretty good future ahead of him. We'll see about that. But overall, if the Rangers wanted to get a trade in for Polio Yarvi, I think they had to get rid of a roster player at least. And sure, it doesn't need to be a good roster player. Polio Yarvi isn't even in the league. So trading a good player for Polio Yarvi doesn't really make any sense but somebody who could be useful to the Oilers and maybe give up like a 7th or a 6th or a 5th as well as something like that would probably be enough to get Polyarvi from the Oilers. Imagine, the Finnish core over there, Capo Caco, Jesse Polyarvi, and then Levy Altonen. That would be really cool. That just popped right into my mind right away. I was like, oh yeah, they'd have Altonen. He's really good, but... Overall, the Rangers are in a different position than the Habs in terms of trading for Polyarvi, but obviously we have one more team to discuss on this front, and that is the Arizona Coyotes, who, in their own right, they don't necessarily have the same Finnish core that Montreal does or that the Rangers could have. They don't have any Finns on their roster right now, but they do have a few interesting Finnish prospects. Aku Ratu is the older brother of projected first overall pick in the 2021 NHL entry draft. That's Atu Ratu, by the way, who's the younger brother who's going to be drafted. He's going to be amazing. They also have Matthias Maselli, who's doing really well with the Ilvis right now in the Liga, the same league that obviously Poliarvi is playing in right now. But overall, the Coyotes are doing much better than the Rangers are in the standings. In fact, the Coyotes are in that Pacific division. Right now, they're currently tied for third in the Pacific. And it's a really big tie. Like, five teams are separated by, like, one point. It's crazy. So the Coyotes are in a position where I don't know if they'd really want to meddle with their team and trade away a roster forward for a guy like Pugliarvi, who isn't even playing in the league right now, unless they wanted to pull him back over into North America. But the Coyotes are in a position where, in my opinion, their prospect depth isn't as secure as Montreal's, where they could just throw away picks like Handy if they wanted to. But the Coyotes might need to take a risk or two here if they really wanted to pry this player away. If they see him as a valuable option, they're going to have to give up value. And in my opinion, I'm not really too sure if I see Arizona really making the necessary moves to do that. Their prospect depth isn't amazing, in my opinion, and sure, they have a lot of really good young guys on the team, Keller, Hayton, etc., but I think you'd have to trade away a few guys like a Liam Kirk or a Jan Yannick or whatever to really get Pogliarvi away because, sure, those guys are doing really well in junior, but when you take a look at it value-wise, Pogliarvi is more valuable than a Liam Kirk or he's more valuable than a Jan Yannick or he's more valuable than... Some of these other guys that the Coyotes have in their prospect pool, it's not really too deep, but overall, I think 
just the Coyotes do have a team that they wouldn't want to mess with, so you'd have to give away those prospects. But overall, those are three scenarios that I think could possibly happen. Obviously, the fourth period is reporting it, so we'll discuss it because it does have a little bit of discussion value. I think out of these three teams specifically, I think it's the Habs who have the biggest chance of getting Pugliarvi just because of how many valuable assets they have. Sure, a second, a third, a fourth, it's not really super valuable, but when you use those picks on guys like Hillis or Yelonen or Romanov, then they become really valuable. So the Canadians have a ton of really good guys that were taken with those later picks, so they can afford to trade away some of their draft picks. As for the Rangers, I can see them trying to do something with their roster to get Pugliarvi in there, but I don't know if they want to mess with their prospect pool. And as for the Coyotes, they're kind of in the wild card here because they're a good team on paper. Darcy Kemper's doing amazingly well, but their prospects aren't at the caliber that I believe Montreal's or New York's could be at. So I think they have probably the lowest chance out of these three in getting a Pugliarvi. But that wraps up the video here. Hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.